Okay, so I have set up. Uh, uh, I have a setup here, and let me just. So I'm going to make sure. Yeah, my micro bit is connected. So I'm going to start this project. And basically, what I've done is I've I've tried to create a smart irrigation system here. So the idea is that this is my soil sensor. It's in the water right now. And my micro bit is showing a tick. So all the lights, LEDs don't show because of the camera, but it's a tick. And my servo is in a particular state. And now when I take out the sensor, immediately I get a cross and my servo is turned. So the servo I'm saying is kind of detect, uh, is depicting like a tap. So now the tap is on and water is started running. And let's say now the plant has water. So the servo is switching the tap off and my micro bit is giving you a, a check mark. Okay. And again, I'm taking it out. Okay. So I'm saying we are just going to see this uh, uh, thing working, but what you were saying about sensors, not showing the right value that is always there. So if you see the fluctuation here, See, even though I have left the sensor alone, okay, and the sensor is in, in, in the same level of water, but look at the way the readings are changing. So this is a problem with the sensors. The only thing is that most of the times the change in value, so the sensor is still in the water and the value has gone from some, you know, 52 or whatever to like 61. Now the issue is what will happen when I take this sensor out of the water. Okay. And now I'm getting a value, which is 95 or whatever, 99. Okay. 93. So what I'm saying is when you are building systems, this problem will always be there that your, your, uh, your sensors will may show very, you know, uh, different values. And these are because these are, you know, these are not very, very good quality sensors. They are, they are pretty cheap sensors, but they are just meant to give us an idea. Okay. But I'm saying what, what we can do is because the range is quite different. See right now the range, it's giving me a 38, 39, 40. So I'm saying when the sensor is in the water, I'm getting a range from 30 to almost 60. And when the sensor is out of the water, then I'm getting a range, which is like maybe 85 plus. So I have enough range fortunately here and hence the code I have written here is when uh, greater than 70. Okay. So when the, the sensor is out of the water, I'm quite sure that the value is more than 70 and hence my system is working. So I'm saying that, yes, I mean, sometimes the uh, difference in the values that you will get on your sensor may be too low and you can't write a good program. That is possible. Okay. Uh, but if, if you are lucky enough and you're getting a, a good range from the sensor, then make sure that this value that you put is, uh, is, you know, uh, wide enough. So more than 70 is kind of working right now. And, and, you know, so that is why this, this system is, is working, even though the range is quite a lot. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to stop this. Um, I'm just going to explain this circuit and my program because like I'm saying, most of the projects will be like this. We will read some value from the sensor and we will, uh, you know, so in this case, a soil sensor, and then we will drive some sort of an actuator in this case, a servo. So I'm saying, I do want you to make a project. And if your sensors are giving you very, very, uh, different values, then use an onboard sensor. Okay. Use, uh, you know, maybe a loud light sensor or a sound sensor, which will give you, I think, uh, uh, discrete values and use that to drive a servo. Okay. And the final thing I want to explain here is that sometimes when you are driving some components or even some sensors, sometimes the, uh, uh, the voltage that they require or rather the current that they require is much more than what the micro bit can generate. Okay. So if you can see here, I'm not using the three volt pin, which is the three volt out from the micro bit. I'm not using that 
because I'm just playing safe. I am giving the required current to my sensor and to my servo, not from the micro bit, but from a battery pack. So this is what I'm going to explain how to uh, do this. And it's all the same. I mean, even if, if instead of the micro bit, I had an Arduino here, all this setup will not change. And it's a very simple setup. Okay. So I'm just going to dismantle it and then show it to you step by step. So what we want to do is we have a servo and we have a soil sensor and we don't want to use the micro bit power supply. And the same logic will apply wherever, you know, uh, in any other project. So what, what we are doing now is I'm, I'm showing you step by step. So I've got a, a power pack and I have connected it to a breadboard. So this is a mini breadboard. So I have got my negative terminal here, my positive terminal here. And all I, what that I have to do is like, for example, if I have this soil sensor and from this soil sensor, I've got three, you know, things coming out. So I've got the VCC. So I am connecting the VCC to my battery pack. Now you should also be careful. I am using, you know, these, uh, uh, rechargeable batteries and these are only 1.2 volts. They are not 1.5 volts. So in my battery pack, I only have 4.8 volts. Okay. Uh, but if you use a proper, uh, a regular, uh, battery, it will be 1.5 volts and then your battery pack will be six volts. So I'm saying you should go online and, and just check with whatever component you're using, just check the specs uh, of that, uh, online and be sure that you are not, you are giving it a voltage supply, which it can take. Okay. So in my case, uh, all these components can take 4.8 volts. So that is why I'm taking the VCC of, from my, um, from my soil sensor to, and I'm connecting it to the, uh, voltage supply, the positive side of my battery. And I'm taking the ground pin and I'm attaching it to the, um, to the negative terminal. Okay. And then my, in, in this case, I have uh, analog out. So I'm taking the analog out and that is what I'm giving to pin one. Okay. And I'm saying that if instead of the micro bit, I had an Arduino here. Okay. So, um, if I take an Arduino, then uh, it's the same principle. Okay. In the Arduino on this side, you've got uh, GPIO pins, general purpose input output pins, which are digital. So in this case, because we are taking uh, analog out, we will not connect it on this side. We will connect it on this side because on this side, these A, A, O, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, these are the analog pins in the Arduino. So I'm saying that's the only difference. I would have taken this and I would have put it here. Okay. And then so this is my, my soil sensor connected. Okay. So soil sensor positive to the positive, sorry, VCC to the positive ground to the negative of the battery and signal. I'm taking a digital signal out. Then I have my servo. So again, my servo has, uh, three things. So I'm taking the VCC and again, I have checked my servo can take 4.8 volts. So I'm putting this. VCC on the positive side and I'm taking the ground and I'm putting the ground to the negative terminal. And then I'm taking the signal pin of my, uh, uh, of my servo and I'm attaching it to uh, pin two of my micro bit. And this is a digital signal. Okay. So if in the Arduino, I would have attached this anywhere here. Okay. Because these are the dig digital GPIO pins. Okay. So, so all my, now what I've done is I have not used the three volt of the three volt out of the micro bit. I have instead powered all my components. And if I added more things here, because I've got another pin pin zero here, and let's say I was adding some led or something. I, I don't have to take the power from this micro bit. The, I don't have to draw the current from the micro bit. I can take that pin zero, put it here and add more components. Okay. And the final thing that you have to do is 
because remember what I said yesterday that when you're working with electronics, voltage is potential difference. And hence, all the component have to be at the same ground level. And right now, my, my, my soil sensor is on the same ground as my battery pack. My servo is on the same ground as my battery pack, but my micro bit is not on the same ground. So what I have to do is I have to take a pin from the micro bit ground and I have to give it, I have to connect it to the ground. Now all the all the components in this circuit are on the same ground, but my uh, 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 my sensor and my servo are not drawing current from the micro bit. They are drawing it from the battery pack. And this is how I mean even in the Arduino it will work the same. Arduino ground will have to go to, into this ground so that there is common ground. The analog pin will go here. The digital pins will go here, and just like. In, in this case, I've written a code where I'm reading pin one. Uh, you will do the same for the Arduino. So the last part here I'm explaining uh, is the is the program that I've written. So uh, let's break it down. So let's let's take it component by component. So first, what I've done is I have created a variable called dry soil because that's what my soil sensor is testing dryness of the soil, and that value is basically the analog value of pin one. So I have declared a variable and I have set the variable as dry soil. And then if I'm putting it in the forever block, when I will run the program forever, I can see what is the value of uh, analog pin one, which is the soil sensor. Okay. And then I'm adding some uh, uh, conditional statements. So my first conditional statement, because I checked the value of my soil sensor, I had said that the range is from you know 50 to 60 when it is out of the water and uh, uh, sorry 50 to 60 when it is in the water and uh, 80 90 when it is out of the water so i'm taking a safe value of 70 and i'm saying if the analog value of pin 1 is greater than 70 which means that uh, uh, the uh, uh, soil sensor is not in the water or there is no moisture in the uh, in the soil then I'm saying you should display a cross and I'm setting uh, the servo which is connected to pin 2 and there is a straightforward command here in, in this particular version of Scratch. Uh, hey, Anna, which, Anna yeah. can you please zoom your screen? Oh, I, sorry, I? Can you zoom your screen, Anna? Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, so I've declared a... Uh, um, a variable and I've set it to value of pin one. Okay. And then I am using some conditional statements and I'm using this conditional statement where I'm checking the value of pin one. And I'm saying if it is greater than 70, then one, I'm displaying a pattern, which is a cross pattern. And second, I am setting the servo. And I was saying that in, in, uh, in this version of scratch, if you will scroll down, there is a straightforward set servo. So whichever pin you have set the servo on in, uh, you know, micro bit pin zero, pin one, pin two, you can select that pin and you can just simply put a value anywhere between zero and 180. Okay. So I am just saying here that if the, my soil sensor is outside, uh, you know, is not detecting moisture in the soil, then show a cross and put the servo at zero. Then I will come to this alarm in uh, later. Then I'm saying, but if the value is uh, less than 70, which means my sensor is in the water, then I am uh, defining the else condition. I'm saying, because now the water, there is enough moisture, the soil sensor is detecting enough moisture in the, sen in, in the soil. So I'm saying, did show me a checkbox and my servo, which is connected to P2, make it 180. Okay. Now the third thing is just this alarm. So let's, let's not, let's just look at this. So in this version of scratch, you have, uh, in the micro bit more extension, you simply have this command here, which is play some tone. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so it will play this tone. So what I wanted was I wanted to create an alarm 
so and this is where you can play with things okay if i'm just playing this single tone okay it's just playing the tone at some whatever 440 hertz but if i am changing these hertz uh, let's say i'm making this 540 right so at 440 i get some tone and at 640 you can just play with it okay so all i'm saying is what i did was i created an alarm by saying first you play the sound at 440 for half a second and then you play at 540 for another half a second and these two together Uh, kind of give me a alarm kind of a sound and so i'm saying that i uh, uh, put this so in scratch you can go to my blocks and create a new block so i just created a new block i gave it a title called alarm and then i said define alarm so i said alarm is basically you play the tone at 440 hertz and 540 hertz and have a wait of five seconds and then here when you will create a new block, you will get a, this, you know, new block. And so I'm saying here, when the sensor is detecting that there is no moisture in the soil, it is displaying a cross, setting the servo to a certain position and calling this subroutine or this set of instructions called alarm right here. So I'm just saying that this is another feature. I'm sure you've done it in tech with that if I have a set of commands, which I want to keep repeating, I can put them in a subroutine in, in scratch. They call it a block and make my own block and then call that block. So in this condition, now my alarm is playing and in the second condition, which means when the soil sensor is detecting moisture in the soil, I don't want this alarm to play. So what I did was I just made it blank play tone, nothing at volume, nothing. So this will turn the alarm off. And then when I'm, when uh, all I'm doing is putting all of this inside a forever loop. Okay. So that's the entire program. So, so this is, you know, this is the broad logic that in your sensor side, you have, uh, uh, you know, you have the sensor detecting something, sending the signal to micro bit, and then you're programming. This is where I'm saying, this is the brain of the, my, my whole system. And this is where I've said, read the value of analog pin and based on the values do something so if it is greater than 70 do something if it is less than 70 do something and i have also put an actuator which is a servo so this is a kind of a complete system okay and this is what i'm saying that we will uh, you know take another break but i do want you to make this because this will give you a lot of confidence in making projects and I'm saying if your soil sensor or whatever MQ2 sensor, et cetera, is misbehaving, then don't use external sensors, just use some internal sensor, like some light sensor. So I can read the value of the light falling on the micro bit. Remember, it's, it's straightforward. If I go here, I say light intensity, it's telling me the light. It's saying that the light level right now is 72. And if I put my hand on, on it, it becomes zero. Okay. Uh, so I've got my hand here zero and then i remove my hand and i have 70. so i'm saying just so i what i'm trying to say is that i can just use this so i'm saying set some variable and instead of all this i can just say take light intensity and make some program so if light intensity is something i want the servo to be in some position and if light intensity is something different change the position maybe use a use some display maybe use some alarm whatever you want but I do want you to make one complete system where you will read some sensor value and then you will drive an actuator. And if possible, try to use your battery pack and a, 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 a breadboard so that you learn not to draw current from the board, but to supply the current from some other power source, in this case, a battery pack. Okay, so I'm going to stop here.